What's not forbidden is allowed. This is the principle of the declarative approach. Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and this video is about my process mining toolbox. We can understand the declarative approach for business process specification as the opposite of the classic PetriNet based approach. With PetriNets we use a graphical representation of the order in which activities can occur in a process. Everything that is not allowed by our PetriNet is forbidden. In a declarative model you basically say these are the possible activities. You can do anything you want with them as long as you don't violate these constraints. And today we look at declarative process discovery. There are two algorithms, the declare miner and the minerful miner. They both produce a model in the declare language. So stay with me to see how they perform with our process logs. So we have um, our first process here, travel booking, and um, I have it open in ROM this time. And what we can see is that the declare miner uh, doesn't really discover many of these ordering aspects that are in the original model. And even if we change the minimum constraint support to, let's say, 40%, um, we have some ordering now going on, but still um, order with train and cancel request and decline um, offer, all these are still up here and they cannot, it cannot really discover that this can only be done after the request has been refined. So it, it fails here, but fortunately um, we have the minor full miner here and the minor full miner um, delivers a process model that looks a little complex, but it captures our our original process model more or less. Uh, for example, um, if we zoom it in a little, we can see here that offer with train, offer with bus and um, cancel requests are here. Uh, we have offer with plane, so these three tasks are in the right order. Approve offer is after them and so um, I would say this is really quite nice. Booking the trip is one of the last activities, so that's fine. Let's look at um, the recruiting process. Um, the recruiting process, um, let's start again with the declare miner. Um, the declare miner here with 90% um, doesn't really show us uh, enough dependencies. If we look at the original process model, phone interview, live interview um, and final approve in this order. Um, let's just reduce the minimum constraint support to 60% and um, we then get a phone interview, live interview, list candidates, final approve. And so this really, I would say, represents more or less what's going on, given that we have a multiple instance process here. And if we look at the minor full um, example um, with 90%, This, um, you know, is not so not so good. Um, also, we have the, the layout is strange. Um, we normally would expect that it starts with pick candidates, which is here, down here. And then um, we have um, the individual check, phone interview, live interview, and so on. So we have the phone interview as a chain response, which is nice. But then the live interview, um, we have this as a 100% precedence here, so we can say, okay, that's fine. 
um, but it really, um, you know, the layout is not very good. The final approve is just up here, which is the last one in the sub workflow. And after all this, um, we should always have list candidates, and list candidates is here. So, the next example um, is the procure to pay. Procure to pay, um, a very long process. And um, what we can see here in the, uh, in the declare miner is that it's really, you know, having all of these things more or less independently and the, the, the order is not really there. And if we change this to, let's say, 50%, um, we get some ordering here, but still many of the tasks are just up here without any relation to the rest. So it doesn't really capture um, the essence of this long sequence of the workflow, which is really structured because it has these sub workflows here that are, um, you know, that even make these chains longer. And it's the same problem for the minor full minor. Um, it, um, it just, uh, it discovers a process model, but that's really, I mean, you know, that's really complex and it it's to me it looks like like spaghetti and it doesn't get better if we turn the minimum constraint support down of course yeah gets worse so i would say the declarative approach fails here um now of course uh, if we look at the declarative model the original one and now we look at what has been discovered from the log. Um, that is interesting. So um, let's see, take a horizontal layout here. Uh, we have the declare miner with 90%. And um, we have create report, which is the initial task exactly once. That's correct. Um, and then we have edit report, which is a chain response 100%. And um, then we have check report, publish report. So I would say check report. Can we do edit report after check report? I think this is possible, yes. So that's a, a nice uh, representation. As expected, the declarative process discovery works better on more unstructured business processes. I would definitely recommend this if you don't know how structured your original process is. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.